For Pluralsight, I'm David Tucker, and this is Cloud Tracker on Microsoft Azure. It's our first episode of the series, so stay tuned for the news, updates, and resources that you need if you're building solutions on Microsoft's cloud platform. At Pluralsight, we know that one of the biggest challenges cloud developers, administrators, engineers, and architects face is keeping up to date with new services, concepts, and resources. And that's why we're bringing you Cloud Tracker. My name is David Tucker, and I am an author at Pluralsight, and I'm a cloud strategist. And each month, I'll be giving you insights into key announcements and platform updates for Microsoft Azure. In addition, I'll be highlighting key resources that you can leverage to take your skills to the next level. Now that we have that out of the way, let's dive into the updates for May 2021. Adding voice, video chat, and SMS to your Azure-based applications is now even easier as Azure Communication Services is now generally available. The same platform that powers Microsoft Teams is now available for you to leverage. If you're new to the service, you can check out the links in the episode notes to get access to multiple samples that can guide you on your integration, whether you're building for the web, iOS, or Android. In addition, you can check out Azure Communication Services on GitHub to get links for the SDKs for each of the different features of this service. Depending on the capabilities you're leveraging, you can find SDKs for JavaScript, .NET, Python, Java, iOS, and Android. From this link, you can also grab links to Microsoft Q&A, as well as a tag on Stack Overflow to connect with other developers that are building on the platform. Now, Microsoft has continued their investment in Java with the preview release of the Microsoft build of the Open JDK. While not generally available yet, this release is intended to be an LTS or long-term support version that will be supported through 2024. This version includes binaries for Java 11, and it can run across the desktop and server with support for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. In addition, Microsoft also released an early access binary for Java 16 for Windows on ARM. Now, why is this announcement something that you should be paying attention to? Well, Microsoft states that later this year, the Microsoft build of OpenJDK will become the default distribution for Java 11 across Azure managed services. Now, Microsoft also announced their intention to release OpenJDK binaries of Java 17 by the end of the year. You can find links to the announcements as well as how to get the Microsoft build of the OpenJDK in the episode notes. Microsoft is now making it easier to leverage Azure ML for developers and data scientists working in VS Code. With this preview release of the Azure Machine Learning Extension, you can seamlessly connect to your Azure ML Compute instances from within the IDE. This feature utilizes the VS Code remote server to create a real-time connection between your machine and the cloud-based compute instance. You can even configure your Azure ML Compute instance to be a remote notebook server when working in Jupyter. This makes it even easier to leverage the computing power of the cloud when you're analyzing data, training models, or optimizing the models that you create. You can review the Microsoft documentation on how to get this up and running in the episode notes. I don't generally include service updates in the featured announcements, but Cognitive Services has multiple updates that provide some new functionality that you can leverage. First, the Computer Vision API version 3.2 is now generally available. And with this release, there is now additional support for OCR text extraction across 73 different languages. They have even provided a way for this functionality to run on-premise with a container that you can deploy. With this capability, you can now also do more extraction from forms using Form Recognizer across all 73 of those languages. I've included a link to a video on MSDN that will walk you through the new capabilities in this feature. In addition, if you're leveraging cognitive services for anomaly detection, you can now leverage the service for multivariate anomaly detection, which is now in preview. I've provided links to all the updates for cognitive services in the episode notes. Next, we'll be diving into our list of platform updates and content that you should be familiar with. While these might not be as big as our featured announcements, these updates could impact the work that you're doing on the platform. And to start it off with, we're gonna be talking about a new region that Microsoft will be bringing to Northern China. According to Microsoft, this expansion is expected to effectively double the capacity of Microsoft's Intelligent Cloud portfolio in China. This region is expected to be online in 2022. Now, if you are leveraging Application Gateway, you can now leverage URL rewriting 
as this feature of the service is now generally available. This enables you to rewrite the query string path and even the host name of requests. Check out the episode notes for information on how to leverage this today. Now next, if you're looking for an efficient and elegant way to publish your API documentation, then look no further than Microsoft's open source tool, API Portal, which is now generally available. This feature enables you to create your documentation site through GitHub. All you need is your open API file, and you can follow the instructions in the tutorial to get started. Grab the link to the tutorial in the episode notes. Now, if you've been looking to leverage system assigned managed identities with Azure Automation, you are in luck. This feature is now in preview for both cloud and hybrid jobs. You can check out the documentation to review the prerequisites that are required to make this work for your automation runbooks. Next, if you've been leveraging static web apps, but you want to support deployment from another source control repository other than GitHub, you've been out of luck. However, you can now leverage Azure DevOps and any source control repository that it supports. This feature is available today in preview, and you can check out a tutorial in the episode notes. And for our final platform update, Azure Blob Storage now supports objects up to 200 terabytes in size. So if you want to upload a file that contains more data than all of the published books in human history, you can go right ahead. This is possible with Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. This feature is now generally available and you can leverage it today. Every person working in the cloud has to deal with the challenge of determining how to continually improve their skill set. This is a problem that we are going to help you solve here on Cloud Tracker. Today, I'm going to share several resources that can help you uplevel your skills on Azure. All of today's resources can be found in the Pluralsight Content Library. First, if you're looking to learn how to improve your skills with Azure Functions, I have both a video course and a lab for you. The video course, Implement Azure Functions by Mark Heath, is a part of the Microsoft Azure Developer Certification Path, and it provides information on the fundamentals of functions, triggers, as well as input and output bindings. After the video course, if you want to test out your skills within a real environment, you can leverage the lab on creating and configuring Azure Functions. This lab will implement many of the concepts that you've covered within the video course. Now, if you haven't tried out labs yet, it is a great way to grow your cloud skills without having to even set up a subscription with Azure. Now, there are two additional labs that are new this month, Manage Storage Accounts on Azure and Manage APIs in Microsoft Azure with API Management. If these are areas you're interested in, be sure to jump in and check these out. Thank you for joining me on this first episode of Cloud Tracker. Be sure to let us know what you want to hear more of on this series moving forward. Also remember that I have links to everything I've discussed in the episode notes for this show. If you know of other people who would benefit from this content, be sure to share it with them. In addition, you can also join me for the latest news for both AWS and Google Cloud Platform on the Cloud Tracker series for those platforms. They should be available on whichever platform you're using to watch this episode. Be sure to come back next month and find out what's new in Microsoft Azure here with me on Cloud Tracker. Thank you.